Antibiotics. They are in our daily lives with a host of uses, whether it be for infections, to prevent potential infections, a term called prophylactics, or put into animal feeds to promote their growth into bigger animals. It's hard to believe that the discovery of antibiotics has yet to pass a century. In fact, penicillin, one of the best known antibiotics, was only discovered in 1928 and not mass produced until 1940. But resistance is already mounting and threatens our modern world. It's becoming more important than ever to find new antibiotics before our old ones stop working for much of the population. While there is much talk about how antibiotics work, how are they found? During the golden age, from the 1940s to 60s, we have the classical approach to antibiotics discovery. Bacteria in soil produce natural substances toxic to other bacteria. These substances are extracted and tested against a plate of bacteria. Such a process of seeing which substance can kill is called screening. Each substance is dropped in different areas of the plate, and its antimicrobial activity, or the ability of the substance to kill bacteria, is determined by a zone of inhibition. Think of the substance as a bomb, and boom, the zone of inhibition as the radius of destruction around it. Within the zone of inhibition, there should be no survivors. Unfortunately, this approach to antibiotics discovery is slowing down, and all we have been doing to the antibiotics discovered through the classical approach is modifying them. But now, enter modern scientific advances. A genome is the complete set of an organism's DNA, including genes which code for the information it needs to survive. Being able to sequence or decode the genome of the bacteria that we want to kill brings us to the genomic approach to antibiotics discovery. For example, certain genome sequences, segments of the DNA code, is specific to a species. These are called conserved signature indels. CSIs, indels meaning insertions or deletions of the sequence, signature meaning specific to a species, and conserved meaning that the sequences are found in a common region in the genome of the species organisms. With the genomic approach, there is an operational code. First, a whole genome search finds a target sequence specific to the bacteria, such as the CSI. Second, there has to be evidence that losing such a sequence will lead to the death of the bacteria. CSIs are characterized as coding for proteins essential to the organism's survival. Third, there has to be evidence that the target sequence can be reached by a drug. Finally, collections of chemicals called chemical libraries will be tested against the target sequence. This is done by high throughput screening. Imagine the classical approach of palliating bacteria to find zones of inhibition, but automated, and having thousands of substances all at once in their own tiny plates of bacteria. And lastly, hopefully, one chemical compound can be identified that targets the protein coded for by the genome sequence. And this is how we can renew our search for new antibiotics. Thanks to modern technology, we are moving on from the classical approach of antibiotics discovery to a genomic one. <coughs> But wait, this is not the end of the story. Getting that identified compound turned into an antibiotic drug for you to use in your next infection is, however, a story for another time. Well, spoiler alert: it's called pharmacology and involves drug administration into and elimination out of your body. Other considerations include whether the killing ability of the compound translates from a plate of bacteria into you, the human body that the bacteria will live in. This is why it takes time between discovering an antibiotic to putting it to use in patients. But never fear, science is hard at work every day. If you found this video interesting and informative, don't forget to subscribe to our demystifying medicine series to learn more.